Wow, what can I really say? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee are actually going to happen. And with all of the recent news that has just dropped on these games, I can't be more excited about it. Sure, we're going back to Kanto, but did you see that trailer? Like, these games look insanely good. The new graphics, realistic scaling, Pokemon following you, there is a lot of content jam-packed in this three-minute trailer. So much so that there might have been some some things that just flew by your head. That's why I got you covered. Today, I'm going to be breaking down this trailer bit by bit to give you guys all the details on what we know so far about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. That essentially means I'm going to be breaking down this trailer, talking about Easter eggs, and just showing you guys things you might have missed. If you guys enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And with that being said, Let's get started. So, once you first see the official trailer, it starts off by showing Pokemon Go, which is vital to the integration of Let's Go. They also show a boy riding a bicycle, which maybe could be a hint to the bike possibly returning, but besides that, there's not much else here, so let's move on. The next point of interest happens once we finally get to see gameplay in Professor Oak's lab. At the beginning, you can see that his lab seems to be more up to date with new technology, and a scale even, but we also get to see a shot at the Pokemon pedestal which contains a couple of Pokeballs inside. This is where one normally selects their starter Pokemon, so this could possibly be a hint to how and where you can eventually obtain the Kanto starters. Or perhaps in this canon, the protagonist has arrived late and all the starters are gone, similar to how Ash started his journey, aside from Pikachu and Eevee of course. We then switch over to various gameplay of different routes, towns, and forests like Pallet, Route 1, and of course Viridian Forest, and none of them seem to be relatively changed. But what I did find interesting though was actually when it switched to gameplay of Fuchsia City. I can tell that this screenshot is in fact from Fuchsia, specifically because of the fact that the roads are made of red bricks, which Fuchsia is the only city in Kanto that has that feature. What's so interesting about this area is that the building placements seem to be much closer than in previous renditions. This can also be further proven by a screenshot here of Vermilion Port. Speaking of which, they also give us a brief look at what the marts look like on the top left corner, so that's cool. Pewter City also looks a lot more modernized and more livelier than ever. And if you take a close look at the top left corner, it actually shows a gym sign, 100% confirming that gyms are indeed back in the Pokemon universe. Moving on, the 38 second mark is really interesting to me because you can see various amounts of hidden things here. The board there seems to have a map that shows a location I am not familiar with in Kanto. Could this possibly be a completely new area in Kanto? There is also images of Rattata on the board, but the shapes of both of them seem to be different. One's fatter and the other one is skinny. And Pokemon Go has brought differently sized Pokemon to the table, so it would make sense if that was the case. There's also a lot of things written in this Pokemon language that I wish I could decipher, but maybe in the coming months more info about this will be revealed. Finally, the last thing I want to mention from this screenshot is the picture on Oak's desk. Now we all know Professor Oak holds his son Blue in high regard, even though he doesn't know his name, but either way, the picture could just be of him. But the main difference here is that Blue's hair is spiky and would be a lot more noticeable on the picture. The hair on the photo has none of the qualities of Blue's hair, so who could this person be? 
Maybe Blue's father? From further view of gameplay, these Pokemon games seem to be more and more immersive than ever. Pokemon now are spotted walking around all over the place in towns, cities, and of course as wild Pokemon. Now you no longer can run into Pokemon via patches of grass, but rather simply seeing them walking to you. This really gives you an even better feeling that this world is truly a Pokemon world. Now getting into into the whole wild encounter aspect of it, it does seem like you can no longer battle wild Pokemon. With the fact that the player didn't send out any Pokemon to battle and the menu screen is completely different, the style seems to further show that the catching system in this game is pretty much the exact same to that of Pokemon Go. The throwing mechanic, the circles, even the Pokeball placement and number of them is a dead giveaway. This changes a lot of things because now that the mechanic is taken out of the games, grinding up Pokemon will be a completely new challenge to do. Catching Pokemon will now be the main grinding method just like in Pokemon Go. CP is also confirmed to be in these games as you can further see here of how much CP this particular Psyduck has. Co-op mode was also another brand new feature introduced in these trailers, and from the looks of things, this looks like it's going to be really fun. But with an awesome mechanic like this coming, it only surfaces further questions. Do the characters always have to stick together? Will there be a split screen option if you do split up? And how easy will the games become because of this feature? There are literally too many questions to ask. But at the 112 mark, we do see that both both players have access to the get ready and item options, get ready being of course the catching option, but only player 1 has help and running away. Now does this mean that player 2 would get their own bag to carry their own items, or do they just use the items player 1 has gathered? Because if it's the latter, both players have to throw a pokeball, so would that count as two pokeballs being used, or would it just be one singular one? Again, there are a lot of questions to come for this co-op game mode, but I'm sure more details will surface in the coming months. But now, if we scroll back on the video, we can actually see something very cool that you might have already missed. I obviously already talked about how immersive these games are, with Pokemon just walking around all over the place, but the trailer also even gives us some insight into how new Pokemon can spawn in certain areas. Here in this clip, we can see what seems to be a Zubat coming out of the ground. Now, is this how all of the Pokemon are going to spawn in areas, or is this just specific to a rocky area. Who knows, but I guess we'll find out in the coming months. Moving on to the next scene, we see another bit of gameplay footage, this time of the Nugget Bridge. First and foremost, the Nugget Bridge looks freaking amazing, like I'm astounded by how good these graphics look. But probably what's most important about this scene is that we also get a first-hand look at the battle mechanics and how everything looks. And I gotta say, these loadouts look freaking amazing. The move loadout on the bottom right looks sleek and awesome. I've also seen some people worry about the XP bar not showing up, but if you look really closely on screen, you can see a empty bar on the bottom below the health bar. But something else really cool that I thought Game Freak did though, was before the battle even started, we got to see the name of your opponent. Now, what's so interesting about this fact is the the fact that the trainer's name, Kale, is actually the same name of the first Nugget Bridge trainer all the way back in Fire Red and Leaf Green. It's a great callback to the old games, but what's very confusing though is that Kale only has one Pokemon being Venonat, which is completely different to that of the original Gen 1 games and their remakes. Could this mean that not all old Pokemon trainers carry the same Pokemon as before? We also now get a good look at a completely new tool to use as a controller called the Pokeball Plus. Now aside from this just being the greatest thing ever created, there was a feature that I noticed that completely flew by my head the first time watching. And that is the fact that as you are catching wild Pokemon, the Pokeball actually lights up in unison to the one in game, and it even matches the color coding, which is pretty damn cool. Gameplay wise, the footage here shows what looks to be the cycling road, but the trainer doesn't seem to be on a bike of any sort. 
Now, in the beginning of the trailer, they did show a kid getting on a bike and riding it, but it doesn't seem like the bike will be making its return to the Pokemon games. I mean, beforehand, in order to even get on the cycling road, you had to have a bike, but now it doesn't seem like that's the case. And further along, they also showed the Pokedex layout, which confirms to us once again that not all Pokemon are going to be the exact same height or weight. On the left side of the screen shows the average height and weight of a Psyduck, but on the right shows different height and weight numbers of other Psyducks you've caught before. They also give another quick nod to the Pokemon Yellow game by showing the dex entries given to us from that particular game. Next up we get a shot of what seems to be the possible layout for the pause screen, or at least part of it. Now what you can see is the save option, the new stroll feature, and of course the cancel option, but some of the key components missing here are the badge case, the bag, and the options menu. With those things in mind, I think what this could be is just a drop down menu for specifically the new Pokewalker feature, and the actual menu is yet to be revealed. And with that, we can finally move on to the Pokemon Go integration part of the trailer, which just leaves me with more questions than answers. We get an answer to how Pokemon can be transferred over from Pokemon. Pokemon Go to Let's Go. That being of course the Go Park, but what exactly is the Go Park and what can you do there? Can you put Pokemon in the Go Park on your team? And is there more to do in the Go Park besides just looking at the Pokemon? Again, I shouldn't be expecting these questions to get answered right away, but I do hope in the coming days we will get an answer because this Go Park feature looks very promising. From there we get even more shots of different areas of the game, like the Pokemon Mansion, the SSN, the Pokemon Tower, some routes, to even, yes, the return of Pokeride. Finally, I can freaking ride on a Charizard and actually move with him. This game gets a 10 out of 10. I, I don't care. It's gonna be a 10 out of 10. This also further confirms now that HMs are no longer a thing, and every Pokemon fan in the world right now is rejoicing, although from the looks of this small tree branch thing, cutting down trees is back, so... That's cool. Speaking of returning features, Pokemon following you around is officially back in the Pokemon world, and it's even better than ever. Pokemon are scaled a lot better, movements are completely different, and both players have the ability to have Pokemon following you. Just look at Electrode, man. That, that's freaking adorable. And for Pikachu and Eevee specifically, they have their own thing, where Pikachu is on your shoulder and Eevee is on your head. It's so freaking cute. And speaking of those two, we can also see that you can now personally customize both Pikachu and Eevee's look. Some of the designs include a bow, a nerd scientist, which reminds me a lot of Elvin Gad, an officer, which seems to draw inspiration from Officer Jenny's uniform, and of course, Red's clothes. Pokemon Refresh is also making a return, which is a great decision to do. Moving on, we even now get a good look at Team Rocket, and the designs of their grunts are different from the past renditions. The glove, boot, and belt colors are much lighter than that of the Pokemon Fire red games and the logo color is blood red rather than the orange from heart gold. The hair color is also different to that of the previous games being brown instead of whatever these are pink and blue I guess. With these changes in mind, it just makes you wonder how different these games are going to be story-wise than their predecessing games. We also get more shots of the inside of Silphco, the SSN, and most interestingly, a view of the entire Pokemon world. It's really confusing to me how the layout of this looks, but expect a theory video coming very soon covering this in detail. I got something for you. And as a side note, these battle animations are freaking spectacular. Explosion has to be the best out of all of them, but man, do they all look good. Next up, we travel all the way back to Cerulean Cave to see probably the most badass scene in this entire trailer. A cutscene revolving around the best and strongest legendary Pokemon of all time, Mewtwo. I mean, just look at this clip. You cannot tell me that isn't badass. 
From here on out though, there isn't much left to talk about. We get more screenshots, figure out Eevee has its anime cry, and get a look at what dropped items look like. Oh, well, I guess there is also that one other thing they mentioned, and that is the fact that when these new games drop, a brand new, never before seen Pokemon comes with it. It may not have been confirmed in the trailer, but Game Freak has come out in multiple interviews and said that it's a new Pokemon. Speculation is all over the place on what potentially this new Pokemon could be, but my guess is most likely a new Eeveelution because it would stay around the whole Gen 1 theme and Eevee is on the cover of one of these games. And I would personally love to see a Steel type Eeveelution just because of the fact that it is one of, if not the strongest type in the game. All in all, this trailer has gotten me super excited for these next Pokemon games, and I can't wait to pick up both copies on November 16th. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and become an Aribro today. I honestly have to say that I'm so excited for these new games to come out, and I've really enjoyed making this video. So if you want to see more Pokemon Let's Go content on the channel, make sure to let me know by leaving a like on this video. If you want to check out the previous video I did, be sure to click the annotation on the left. If you want to see more Pokemon Let's Go videos, click the other annotation on the right. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.